Today we're going to look at Full Calendar, which is a JavaScript event calendar. It has a lot of really cool features, including dragging and dropping to rearrange your schedule, as well as seeing it within a week or an even daily view. So we're going to be putting this into our Rails application. So to get started, we'll download the Full Calendar package, and then we'll just download the latest, which is 2.9.1. Another option is the Full Calendar Rails Gem, and if you look at it, it's simply a gem wrapper for your JavaScript files. And this gem doesn't seem to keep up really well with the latest versions, so this one is running the Full Calendar version 2.8.0. So at a minimum, you'll need the full calendar JS file, and we'll add this into our vendors assets JavaScript. If you are going to support the Google Calendar plugin, which we're not going to look at today, but if you do need that functionality, then you'll also want to include the GCal JavaScript. If you're going to support different locales, then you'll also want to include your language files or the appropriate ones for the languages that you are supporting. For our style sheets, we'll copy over the full calendar style sheet as well as the full calendar print style sheet. And the print style sheet is just for when you go to print the page, then it'll be able to display it a bit nicer. And you'll also want to copy the moment.min.js or you can download moment from its website, momentjs.com. So once you have everything extracted, your vendor folder should look something like this under Assets, JavaScripts, and keep in mind that I am using this date picker, which I'm not really going to cover in this episode because it's just a fairly simple plugin, but you'll have the full counter folder with your different languages in the GCAL, and then you'll have your full counter JS file and your moment JS file. You'll also have in your style sheets folder, your full calendar style sheet, and then the full calendar dot print. So to show you the end result that we want to work on today, we will want to drag our events over to a separate date and then have those changes persist. So when you refresh the page, that date and the events will still be there. We also want to be able to click on one of our existing events and then be able to make changes or also delete it. When you delete the event, you want to be able to remove it from your calendar and again have those changes persist. You can also click and drag to create new events and then you also want to be able to change the color of the events as well. So then dragging this event over to a different time frame, you want it to be able to automatically make the change post it to our server, and then be able to refresh with all the changes persisting. So to get started, once you've added the files to your vendor folder, then you can come into your application JS file, and then add in moment, and then also full calendar. Within your application.css file, you'll want to require the full calendar. And then in our view, we'll just simply create an empty div with the class of calendar. Let's then create a new JavaScript file that we'll put in all of our calendar logic. So here I'm just initializing a initialize calendar function. And then this is just going to loop through each one of the calendar classes. And then on TurboLink's load, we will call the initialize calendar. First, we'll set the calendar equal to this because we're going to need to use the calendar variable within the callbacks to reference back to the calendar object once we get further along in here. So it's just easier to do this now. We can then initialize our calendar, just calling calendar, which remember refers to this. And then we can call full calendar. If we save our changes and then go back to our application, if we refresh our page, you now have your initial calendar. So let's start styling our calendar. First, we're going to modify the header. So what we want to do is just pass in a JSON here, and we're going to set the left side of the calendar to show the previous month, next month, and the today button. In the center, we'll show our month. And then on the right-hand side, we want to be able to toggle between month, week, and each individual day. We can then pass in the selectable true, and this will give us the ability to select multiple days and then have a callback event when this select occurs. And then we'll add in a select helper, which is just going to show a bar as we're dragging along the days. And we want to make sure our calendar is editable, which means that we're going to be able to make changes and add changes to the calendar. And if a certain day has more events than can be displayed on the line without making it too tall, then we can just pass it down to a, a limit to where it'll just show a little two more events with a plus sign. So saving these changes and we can go back to our calendar and refresh our page. And now you see we have our dates 
and then now we have our toggles for the different days. You can then click and drag and you'll see the background highlight and it doesn't do anything yet. So what we're going to do now is put in some callbacks on our events. So let's get started adding our callbacks. So our first callback will be for when the select occurs, whether you click on a certain date or you click and drag out for several days to create an event. We'll use the select callback and then we'll receive the start date and the end date. So whenever the user clicks and drags the dates, we want to pop up a modal that they can then fill out and then save it and then have that create on the calendar. So we'll use the jQuery get script and we'll just pass in our events new. And keep in mind that I'm using this date range picker. So I did have to add a couple of extra things to my application that's going to be able to pick that up and you'll see in a little bit kind of what that looks like. So the jQuery get script will trigger the events new JS file. And you'll see that we're just using the empty div remote container that we used in our previous episode. And then we're just rendering the new partial. The new partial has a new event and then we're just calling the modal show on it. So going back to our application, we can now click and drag on a select dates and then this will pop up our modal and then we can enter in our values and then we can select our colors or whatever preferences that you have here that you need to have filled out for an event. And then once we create event, we now need to make our callback to create the event on the calendar. So if you look at our events controller, you'll see it's a very standard scaffold and it just has the index, show, new, edit, create, update, and destroy actions. And when we create a new event, it just calls the add event new. Once we save it, it calls the create, and then we're just creating the event, passing in these strong params, and then saving it. And because our new form is passing the remote true, it's going to call the create as a JavaScript response. We can then send our new calendar event to the full calendar to be displayed. So our events.js file will have the calendar class that we're going to call full calendar on. And we're passing in the function render event, which will then take the data param that we're passing in a jQuery parse JSON of a rendered partial and make sure that you are calling HTML safe on this so that the parse JSON will correctly read it. And then we're just passing true to make it sticky. And then we'll hide the new form modal. So going back to our application, if we now click the create event, we should now see it pop up. So even though we have created our event, if we were to refresh our page, you'll see that it no longer shows up. So we need to pass in a events option that will fetch a JSON response of all of our events. So if we do refresh our page, our changes will still be there. So we'll need to create our events option and then we're going to pass in our events.json which is going to reference to our index action of the events controller. And keep in mind that the way we're doing this, you're still going to be able to use your authorization. So whether it's pundit or ken ken ken, you're still going to be able to make sure that the user is authorized to list the events and then also make sure that they have the ability to edit them or delete them. So saving our page and coming back to our application if we refresh, we should now see our event pop back up. Next, we're going to look at being able to save our changes. If we click and drag it over to a separate date, it looks like the change has been made. But if you refresh the page, it'll just pop back up to the top. And we can do this with the event drop callback. With the event callback, we'll get our event. So we first want to build our event data, which is going to be the params that we're passing through as a patch to update our event record. So we'll create a variable called event data, and this will be a JSON. So we do need to first pass an event, which is what strong params will look for. And then we can pass in our ID, start and end. And these are just different attributes on our event model. We'll pass in our event ID and then we'll pass in for the start. We'll pass in the new formatted start date that we had just changed. And same way for the end date, we'll pass in our event end date and then the formatted version. We can then make an Ajax request back to our application and then we'll pass in the event update URL. We'll pass in the event data and we'll set the method to a patch. So let's look at where we're getting this update URL from. 
So in our event JSON partial, we're creating the JBuilder JSON hash that's required by full calendar. So really just the first four here are the required keys of full calendar. And then we're just passing in some additional options and then some helper keys that we're gonna be able to use on the callbacks. So here we're passing the update URL, which is just the event path of the event with the method of patch. So that should call the update action. In this all day event method, which is just on our event model, which just checks if the start date is midnight and if the end date is also midnight. If it is, then it's considered an all day event. If not, then it is not an all day event. So to refresh, once you click and drag the event, it'll make an Ajax patch request back to our application at the update URL and it'll pass in the event data that we had just created. This will call our events update.js file. We'll first remove the original event and then we'll render the new event. And then of course we'll hide our modal. So going back to our application now, we'll refresh and then we'll move our event over to the next week and then we'll refresh again and you'll see that it persists. Move it over to a split week, refresh, and it still persists. So once we have our event on our calendar, we want the ability to be able to click on the event, have another model show up, and then be able to make our changes, save it, and have it update. Back in our full calendar JS file, we can call another callback, and this is just called the event click, which we're calling our edit URL, which if you remember from our JSON builder, we have that set. And then this is again, just some of our date range picker stuff that I'll show you at the end. So our events edit.js file, it's simply calling the remote container and rendering in the edit partial. We're then calling the edit event modal, and we're displaying it. And again, with this edit form, we're passing remote true on the form. So whenever that form is submitted, it'll then call, because we're on our edit action, it'll call the update action. Then our update action will look like this again, where we are just removing the event, populating the new event, then hiding the modal. So refreshing our page, we then can click on our test and then you'll see the modal pop up and let's just change this color from green to black and update our event. It removed the old one and added the new one. So lastly, we want to create our delete button. So when you click on the event and the modal shows up, you can then have the option to delete it. And this is simply just a remote true on the delete link. And we're only calling this if the event is a new record. Again, because this is a remote true and the events destroy JS file will look like this where we are just simply removing the event and then we are hiding the modal. So now coming back and refreshing our page, we can then click on our test event, click delete and then you'll see it is removed. We can refresh our page and now we have no events. So I have seeded the database with a lot of different events here. And I just want to show you the speed of how this works. So navigating through different months, you'll see that it is a really quick response. Our view took 20 milliseconds to load and it was a very small active record load. So we can just fly through all of these events, even clicking and dragging these events over to different dates. You'll see that it's a really quick response. So the date range picker that I had mentioned before, when you edit an event or create a new one, you'll see that we have our dates here, but if you click in there, then you can get this really nice date range picker where you can select different times and stuff as well. So this date range picker really doesn't apply to our episode too much, unless if you need to pick your certain dates and times, but I've been trying to find a really nice one. And so far I've been really happy with this one. So I'll link it to the show notes. It has a lot of really cool features where you can select your certain dates, and then you can also put limits on how far back you can go or how wide your date range can be. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.